Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. It is Monday so that means it's a mystery makeup Monday again. How is it Monday? And actually technically I'm filming this two days in advance so it's Saturday but where are the days going? Where are the weeks going? Where are the months going? Honestly life is just you blink and it's gone it is mad so as always i'm going to just do makeup while i chat to you about all true crime mysteries conspiracies murders and sort of weird things and yeah let's get straight into the video put my hair back out of my face a clip up and i need to wash my hair I swear I say I need to wash my hair in like every single video. Yeah, it's a bit messy. Oh, what's going on here? I'll do donkey, that'll do. Okay, so this is um, another case that happened in New York. And this is the murder story of a real estate agent called Michael McMorrow. He was 44 years old when his body was found in the lake in Central Park, New York in May 1997. It's mad how much I have to remember and all these dates and facts. I'm like, have I missed anything? Have I said everything okay? But yeah, no, May 1997. So you can probably say this to me like justice wasn't served and it's kind of I wouldn't say unsolved the why is still like unanswered but the killers were caught and charged but the why remains a mystery right just pop some concealer on my face so the story of how it happened is unclear as well like police have got like a theory they've got suspicions even when they spoke to the, the people who did it they were just like did that happen though like it just doesn't make sense but I'm going to look over here quite a bit because my mirror's over there rather than over there um so the way his death happened was so brutal basically he was found floating face down Ugh. that's a weird sound in the lake and he had his hands partially like hanging off cut open and his um admin was sliced open so much to the point his intestines were floating around outside of his body in the water around him pretty grim right he had no id on him so they're like what's, what's what's going on what's happened this is clearly a murder and they woo they wanted to get to the bottom of it so I need to stop saying so, so much. I say it all the time. On the same night, or I think it might have been like a few hours after, because it happened late at night in Central Park, right? And if you haven't been to Central Park, it's huge. It is so big, you could get lost in there. It is beautiful, but it's, um, yeah, it's dangerous at night time. And, um, he was around drinking. His um, autopsy report came back and he was over the alcohol limit. So he was drunk. And he was quite a big guy. He was a big dude. So it was like, was he gained up upon? Like, how could he not defend himself? But then if you're intoxicated, you're not going to know really what's going on sort of thing. Anyway, a few hours after this happened, please get a call from a anonymous person like a witness if you say saying there's a body down at central park um and yeah they later found blood oh, hello 
they found blood splatters from the body. My cat's been annoying. Get your bushy towel out. Do you mind? I'm trying to film here, mate. Don't mind you. They found blood splatters where the body was and then trails further up the path, which they found odd because normally it's in one spot, like the blood is in within the area, within the radius. This wasn't the case. Right, what are you doing? You're not I'm not putting makeup on you, no. Get down. Down. What's that on you? No, get down. Oh bloody hell, he's got makeup on him now. Just but get down. And um Please were like, this is suspicious. So they looked into it, they investigated, and they found, I think it was like some sort of DNA, like from the blood. I think someone was like, they put two and two together and they found who it was. I can't really, the story was a bit hazy there, like how they found the suspects. But the suspects were two 15 year olds. Two 15 year olds were out drinking as well and they met Michael down by um, the little hut housing by the lake. Let me just do this a bit quick off camera because I can't talk and do this at the same time. So yeah, they found who the suspects were, two 15 year olds and they were Daphne, Abdullah and I don't know how to pronounce his dude's last name but his name was Chris. Christopher Fazzuku, I will type, put his name in the text box or whatever. Um, they were both 15 years old, they were dating and um, when police went to Daphne's house they found them both in the bath naked together getting rid of evidence like washing away blood. At first they said they had a rollerblading accident, they were rollerblading down there and cops only saw a little blood stain. So they were like, doesn't seem suspicious here whatsoever. It wasn't then until they investigated them further that they realised Daphne had Michael's wallet with his ID in it. Why would you have that if you weren't at the crime scene? They also found that Christopher had a knife. They took that away. <coughs> took it into the forensic lab and yeah DNA came back and it was a match there was DNA from Michael on this knife so they went in for questioning they were like how can two 15 year olds plan this attack on a big guy like what he was then accused of being like a paedophile because Daphne's story went like this she w went into the lake for a swim with Christopher and it was cold when they got out Michael put his arm around Daphne to warm her up and Christopher like didn't like this he he lashed out and was like get your hands off her and Daphne said he went ballistic and started to kick the shit out of him. On the back of Michael's legs there were bruises that were quite consistent, the same pattern, shape, same death sort of thing. When questioned, Daphne said he he was trying to make a advance on me and I didn't like it. I felt uncomfortable. So Chris went mad and um I started punching him as well to get him off but she didn't admit this at first she tried to be all like oh I don't know Woo, oh my god I'm so clumsy today one moment please hold <sighs> yeah she didn't um, own up to this at first um, like she was all like innocent she had a dad who like was wealthy and was given everything they just like she just thought i oh, my dad will be able to get me out of this sort of thing you know what i mean i don't think that two 15 year olds can like murder someone 
but I'll try and find like a photo and put it like somewhere here but if you look into her eyes and like look there isn't anything there it's just like it's black it's like no emotion and that's like disturbing and worrying um yes she said that she once she started talking to the detective that they built he built a report with her got, got her to trust him open up to her open up to her open up he got her to open up to him sorry he got her to open up and she eventually started saying what really went down that night. Still said Michael made an advance on her and she didn't like it and took her roller blades and just started like kicking him, hitting him with it. And that is what the marks on his legs, the back of his legs were, was from the roller blade. This point, she said that she didn't mean to kill him and that it was Chris who took the knife and started going at him and there's some defensive wounds on Christopher as well like his hand was in a um, bandage and Michael must have obviously known what was happening and tried to fight for as long as he could but from where he was so intoxicated he couldn't defend himself as well and that explains how two small kids were able to take on a full grown man there's no reports of him ever being involved with any criminal activity regarding like children or anything and cops don't believe that is what happened. They believe Michael was at the wrong place at the wrong time and they were all drinking and Michael wanted the drink. He had a drinking problem, that was all he had an issue with but he was never in and out of prison and cops believed he followed these two teens because they had alcohol what happened truly was like shocking that they were able to just kill this man and he didn't even suffer like one stab wound there was multiple wounds on him like just constantly constantly being stabbed and um Daphne said to the police that she then told him to cut down, the, like slice his body open so that he can sink in the water. That was their plan. Please hold again. No one wants an ice cream, it's bloody raining outside. It's come every single day and it's raining. So many distractions. Right, anyway. But the blinking hells are saying. Ugh. They were sentenced to 10 years in prison and went down as manslaughter. Um, they actually only served six years of the sentence and they were both released in 2004. And the reason it was manslaughter, even though the crime was so gruesome and this poor innocent man was just drinking and just just going about his business i mean he could have started he could have done something but the fact that they said he made a pass on her that's such a uh like an easy lie do you know what i mean it's kind of like oh he was a man he made a pass on me because i was a girl and i'm not saying he like that didn't happen because I wasn't there, you wasn't there, only they know the story and it is sad to think that they didn't get the full sentence like they came out early and like obviously Michael's family are heartbroken and devastated by this because at the end of the day it's murder, they both should have just went down for murder because they couldn't prove who actually like did the stabbing like the like regardless there is a man that's been found dead they try to get rid of his body okay Daphne called the police she could like not call the police uh, yeah she called the police and like could have left him there for like ever but you still 
killed an innocent man. I, I think he was innocent. I think he was. Because if they had more wounds on them, or like, if she had like, strangulation, I don't know, but then it could be self-defense. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's hard because you have a speculation of what happens and like, the police have this theory and they had to put two and two together and retrace, re retrace their steps. But I think these two were just sick and twisted in the head and together they were just evil basically they're evil that's what it is they're evil you know and even if you did make a pass on her okay yeah maybe you might go mad and like start hitting him and get him off but I don't know to murder someone like that and especially like the fact that after he had passed he was still being stabbed multiple times it's mad and then why would you cut him open to try and sink the body and then call the police after unless she had like a ma um, like major change of like mind or something I don't know what am I trying to do here oh yeah my lipstick um yeah so the reason why I say said at the beginning it's sort of unsolved is because the why is still not really there um I mean sometimes there isn't always a motive for murder it's just pure rage and I do think Michael was in the wrong place at the wrong time and these two um, just went mental, saw red and lashed out and it could have been maybe that he was trying to mug them or they were trying to mug him and something just went obviously completely wrong and it didn't turn out how they planned. It just baffles me how two 15 year olds are quite capable of doing something like this and please believe that Daphne was the ringleader of this and she manipulated Christopher into doing this um, and told him to do it so she didn't like take the fall and yeah but they both went down for manslaughter because they couldn't prove who actually stabbed him which is sad like imagine like um yeah it's just it's mental absolutely mental and he was killed in the most horrific way and he is like not able to like obviously tell his story what happened and these two are clearly not right in the head and they're out walking around now which is mad it's like you could know this person and they could like have an identity change and how do you know they're not going to do it again unless it was like um like something that went wrong and they do regret it i don't know can murderers feel empathy i don't think they can absolutely not i think i for an eye two for a tooth but that's just my opinion you know but yeah it's sad he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and he had a family who loved him and they feel like justice wasn't served to have six years out of your ten taking someone's life and like, i get this whole like oh they were good, good behavior i'm sorry but what good behavior are you mad you killed someone with your bare hands and you're 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 freeing the world to live your life while then they're, they're not able to it's 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 truly shocking but um yeah i don't know what the why is in this story um it can loads of different events could have happened that the police probably had planned out but they're out there somewhere and living their lives but I hope it haunts them every day and I really do, really do hope they feel some sort of guilt or remorse or something because, like I said, if you saw the photo of her, she just had nothing. It was just... Nothing was there. It's like, do you actually realise what you have done? Like, what the F? But that is the end of this video. Um, it's not going to be a long one again. I will try and find more that are more in-depth. Um, if you like the video please give it a like and subscribe and I shall see you all in my next video and have a great day whatever it is you are doing. Bye!